Hi, in this video, I'll go through a problem found in the test that Malaysia uses to select a national team to participate in the IMO, the International Math Olympiad. The question set comes in both English and Malay. And the instructions say that you, the student can answer in English or in Malay. Also, if you look at instruction number five here, it says the students are permitted to use a calculator, but this is not essential. And as I go through the problems, I agree, it's not essential, but having it helps. The uh, question set has six problems uh, to be done in five hours and all six problems are equally weighted at seven points apiece. I will be solving this problem right here, problem number three. Um, I may solve the rest of them later, but right now I'm doing this problem because there is a problem solving lesson to be had in doing this problem. Okay, all six problems are really good. I, I wish I had time to do all of them. But right now, let's go ahead and do this problem three. Problem three, find all possible integer values of n such that 12n squared plus 12n plus 11 is a four digit number with all four digits equal. So in other words, they're saying that 12n squared plus 12n plus 11 is equal to some number AAAA. AAA means I'm taking one, 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 I multiply by A and that's how I get AAA, right? So that's one, 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 one times A, where A is between one and nine. A cannot be zero because uh, zero is not a four digit number. You look at this and um, you see a couple of things. First, you see a bunch of 11s. This is 11. This number is 11 times 101. But on the other hand, you also see a bunch of 12. And this is almost 12. This is like 12 minus one. So you're thinking to yourself, there are two approaches. I'm not sure which one will work. Number one is to work in modulo 11, or in other words, look in terms of like divisibility by 11. And the second approach is to work in modulo 12, divisibility by 12. The lesson in problem solving skills that I will approach at the end of the video has to do with how to choose which one to try first. Okay, obviously if you try one and then it doesn't work, then you do the other one. It turns out that both approaches will work, but one of them is more tedious than the other. And the problem solving skill involves figuring out which one is more tedious before you head down that road. But for now, let's just do both of them. Uh, as it turns out, uh, they both work, so let's just do both of them and you can see for yourself which one is more tedious and we'll go back and see why. So solution one is to work in modulo 11. So if I take uh, 12 n squared plus 12 n plus 11 is equal to 1111 a. Take modulo 11 both sides. If you're not familiar with modular arithmetic, then first of all, you should, because there's no way you can do IMO without knowing modular arithmetic. Think in terms of dividing by 11. If I divide both sides by 11, then I get 12 n squared plus 12 n over 11, and then plus one is equal to 101 a. So these are integers. So that tells me that this must also be an integer. 12 n squared plus 12 must be divisible by 11. So that is if you don't know modulo arithmetic. If you do, then just take modulo 11 both sides and you end up with 12 n squared plus 12 n is congruent to zero modulo 11, which says the same thing as 12 n squared plus 12 n is divisible by 11. These two statements mean the same thing. Or in other words, 12 times n times n plus one, if I factor this out, must be divisible by 11. Well, 11 is a prime. So that means if a product is divisible by 11, 
then one of the factors has to be divisible by 11. Well, 12 is not divisible by 11. So that means either n or n plus 1 must be divisible by 11 or congruent to 0 modulo 11. So the n and n plus 1 must be some sort of multiple of 11. Well, there are a lot of multiples of 11. So let's limit down what n could be. All right, we're talking about 12n squared plus 12n plus 11 is equal to the number a, 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 a. So that means it's less than or equal to 9999. That means 12 n squared plus 12 n must be less than or equal to 9988. And if I divide by 12 both sides, then I end up with n times n plus one is less than or equal to 832.33. All right, well, I have uh, 28 times 29 is equal to 812. This is the part where having a calculator helps. 29 times 30 is equal to 870. So that means n times n plus one has to be somewhere in below this number. So it's either, either n is equal to positive 28 and then n plus one is equal to positive 29 or n is equal to negative 29 and n plus one is equal to negative 28. Well, also because it's this four digit number, it also has to be at least one, 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 one. So I have 12 n squared plus 12 n plus 11 has to be greater than or equal to one, 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 one. So that gets me 12 n times n plus one has to be greater than or equal to one, one hundred. So n times n plus one has to be greater than or equal to 91.666 repeating. Uh, well, again, I try out some numbers. Nine times 10 is equal to 90 and 10 times 11 is equal to um, 110. So n times n plus one has to be from this number and up. So that means either n is equal to 10 and n plus one is equal to 11 or n is equal to negative 11 and n plus one is equal to negative 10. So putting these together, n has to be either between negative 29 and negative 11 or between 10 and 28, All right? So I have that inequality and I have also the condition that says n or n plus one is divisible by 11. So looking at all of these numbers, it tells me that n is one of these numbers, negative 23, negative 22, negative 12, negative 11, 10 and 11, and the next pair is 21 and 22. So either n is a number that's divisible by 11 or n is one less than that number. So uh, they come in pair like that. Okay, so I have eight possible answers. Plug them all into 12n squared plus 12n plus 11. And this is the part when having a calculator helps. So let's make a table. And I have these results. This is 6083, so that's not it. This is 5555, five, five, five. that's good. Uh, this is 1595, five. no good. This is 1331, 1331, no good. 1595, five, no good, 5555. Five, five, five. And 6083, so that's no good. Um, actually, in a way, you don't need to do both the positive and the negative because n times n plus one and minus n minus one times negative n are equal. So um, you only really need to do half of the multiplications. 
But anyway, you do all of them and you end up with two answers. N is equal to negative 22 and N is equal to positive 21. These are the two solutions. All right, so that's solution one. Now let's go to solution two where we work in modulo 12. Solution two, work in modulo 12. I have uh, 12 n squared plus 12 n plus 11 equals one, 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 one times a. So I work in modulo 12. I probably want to, to figure out what's going on here. One, 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 one divided by 12 is 92.583 something, something. So if I take 92 multiplied by 12 I, and I get 1104, then that means I want to break 1100 into 1104A plus 7A. And on this end, in modulo 12, 11 and negative one are the same thing. But to make that clear, let's write it like this, 12N squared plus 12N plus 12 minus one. So uh, if I divide by 12, then all of these will go away. All of that will go away. And the only remainder left are these two things. So uh, let's do it like this. Let's do uh, 12 n squared plus 12 n plus 12 minus 1104a is equal to one plus seven a. All of this is divisible by 12. So if I divide by 12, both sides, then over here, I get an integer. I get n squared plus n plus one minus um, 92a. And over here, I have one plus seven a over 12. So that tells me that one plus seven a must be divisible by 12. If you do know modulo arithmetic, the equivalent to this is to go modulo 12, both sides, then I end up with negative one is congruent to seven A mod 12. So that says seven uh, A plus one is congruent to zero modulo 12. And that's the same conclusion that says one plus seven A must be divisible by 12. Okay, then I just find all the A's where one plus seven A is divisible by 12. And A is between one and nine. A is a single digit number. So I just check all the numbers one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and see what seven A plus one is equal to. And up with eight here, 15, 22, 29, 36, 43, 50, 57, 64. And which of these is a multiple of 12? Not that, not that, not that, not that. Okay, here we go. Uh, not that, not that, not that. And 64 is not a multiple of 12. So A has to be equal to five. So I have the equation 12 N squared plus 12 N plus 11 is equal to 5,555. 12 N squared plus 12n minus 5544 is equal to zero. And I divide both sides by 12. And I know that because I already did the work up here and the one plus seven a has to be a multiple of 12. So I know I can divide by 12, 462 equals zero. And um, either quadratic formula or factor, you can factor or quadratic formula. Either way gets you two, two answers, n equals to 21 and n is equal to negative 22. All right, so here we have these two solutions and they're both good, but one of them is more tedious. Where are the tedious places? Well, here's one tedious place where you have to calculate seven a plus one for a bunch of numbers. And here's another where you have to use a quadratic formula with a large number, right? or you have to try to factor 
that large number. But if you think about it, this is the kind of thing you can do without a calculator. If you didn't have a calculator, it's not that big of a deal to compute 7a plus 1. It's just the seventh table and then add one to it. And the quadratic formula may be a little bit hairy, but factoring, factoring can be done without a calculator if you break the 462 into its prime factorization. Now, if you were working in mod 11, on the other hand, there are a lot of, a lot more arithmetic. There's all of these 12 n squared plus 12 n plus 11, which is a much, much bigger calculation than 7 a plus one. And having to deal with these numbers here, divide this number by 12 to get an exact number and trying to figure out what number fits. Uh, divide 9988 by 12 and try to find what numbers fit. That's a lot of work without a calculator. So at the end of the day, it seems like solution one working with modulo 11 would lead to a more tedious solution than working in modulo 12. So going all the way back to the beginning, when you are looking at this expression and you see a bunch of 12 and you see a bunch of 11 and you have this idea that you got to work in one of them, right? Either modulo 11 or modulo 12. Modulo 11 is a little bit more attractive at first because it's a prime number. Chances are you get more out of doing modulo a prime number than you do modulo a composite number like 12. But what it turns out is this, when you do modulo 11, then the A goes away. The A disappears because it's part of a multiple of 11. And you have N left, and here's the problem. N, there's no limit on what N can be. If you look at our solution again, we have to go through steps on limiting the values of N. Whereas if you work with modulo 12, then the n's go away, the a is left, but a is limited between one and nine only. You don't need to worry anymore about how to limit the value of a. So with the calculator, the two solutions are kind of equivalent, but without a calculator, doing modulo 12 is a lot less work than doing modulo 11. So if you're in a situation like this, where you have a problem where you need to choose between two methods, you want to know which one to try first, right? Because if you try one, it doesn't work or it gets so tedious, you have to give up. Then you wasted all that time before you move on to the other method. So this is one way. One way is to think about if I take this method, okay, then how will the problem be simplified? And if I take that method, how will the problem be simplified? You think ahead on which method is gonna simplify the problem how. And then based on the simplified version, you can make a more educated guess as to which one is gonna be more tedious than the other, right? Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Bye.